Hi there, welcome to another revision video for A2 Geography from part 2 of the Tectonic section covering volcanicity and volcanic case studies. So I'll be looking at extrusive landforms, measured forms, volcanoes, examples, types, structure, size and frequency of their eruptions and the types of rock and lava, intrusive landforms, dikes, sills, batholiths and bosses, extrusive activity, minor forms, geysers, boiling mud, sulfur tourers, fumaroles and hot springs, and volcanic case studies of Mount St. Helens, Montserrat, Iceland, Pinatubo, Mount Santake and Nero Congo. The difference between intrusive and extrusive rocks. So extrusive igneous rocks cool quickly. As a result, these rocks are fine grained or lack crystal growth. An example is rhyolite. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed from magma that cools slowly and as a result these rocks are coarse grained for example granite <coughs> types of rock sedimentary rock this is layered rock formed by dead sea creatures and shells igneous rock previously molten volcanic rock metamorphic rock is formed from intense pressure and heat which has changed over time with meta meaning change. Lava. Valsatic lava. Lava formed commonly at constructive plate margins with a low silica content, low viscosity and very hot over 950 degrees Celsius. It's quite runny as you can see in this picture. And acidic lava. Formed commonly at dis destructive plate margins with a medium silica content and viscosity around 750 to 950 degrees Celsius. Finally, rheolitic lava, which is formed commonly at destructive plate margins with a high silica content and viscosity less than 750 degrees Celsius, so has a cooler temperature. Extrusive landforms, volcanoes. Types of volcanoes. We have a fissure eruption, a shield volcano, ash or cinder cone, Volcano, composite volcano, volcanic dome, and finally caldera. Fissure eruption. Example is the Columbia River Plateau. Characteristics include a very liquid, non viscous lava emitted from fractures. Rock type is basaltic. Uh, eruptions are gentle and persistent. Shield volcano. Example is Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Characteristics include liquid runny lava emitted from a large central vent or group of vents, gently sloping and ha have a flat shape. Basaltic rock type. Uh, eruptions are quite gentle and frequent uh, and largely predictable. Ash or cinder cone volcano. Example is Mount Zion in Israel. Characteristics include explosive liquid lava, small in size, central vents, pyroclastic material composed of ash and cinders. Composite volcano. An example is Mount St. Helens in USA. Characteristics include explosive and unpredictable eruptions, steep sides, viscous lava and explosive pyroclastic eruptions. It's created by layers of ash and rock built up from eruptions as viscous lava cools and solidifies on the sides, as you can see here the layers. Rock type is largely andesitic. Volcanic dome. Mount St. Helens lava dome. Characteristics include very viscous lava, relatively small can be explosive, steep sided, lava cannot travel far and this gives convex cone shaped volcano. Finally we have caldera. Example is Yellowstone National Park in the USA. Characteristics include very explosive and unpredictable eruptions, very massive in size and a rock type mainly andesitic. Types of eruptions and their characteristics. First we have Icelandic. This is just effusions of molten basaltic lava that form long parallel fissures, so just cracks in the ground. 
Examples are lava plateaus with runny lava frequent and non-explosive. Second, we have Hawaiian. Very frequent eruptions, small, little explosiveness, low viscosity and pressure from magma flume. Lava flows from a volcano summit leading to formation of a shield volcano with a large gentle slope. Height of eruption column is less than 2 kilometers. Strombolian. Moderate bursts of gases, continuous small eruptions, basaltic lava, frequent eruptions. Explosions of lava caused by large periodic bubbles of gas and you get volcanic bombs which are pieces of rock flung from the volcano. Height of the eruption column is less than 10 kilometers. Fourth, we have Vulcanian. We have explosive eruptions as a result of hot magma and groundwater interacting. Single powerful explosion ejecting ash and steam, for example, a geyser. Height of eruption column is less than 20 kilometers. We have for the number five, Sertian. Very explosive eruption and acidic and volcanic lava. We get lava flows and ash, and it takes place in shallow areas or lakes, viscous magma. Height of eruption column is less than 2 kilometers. Subplenium for number 6, or Pelion as well. Explosive outbursts, pyroclastic flows, gas and lava. Very destructive, infrequent eruptions. Height of eruption column is less than 30 kilometers. And finally, Plinian or Vesuvian, for violent eruption, gas rich magma, which is very acidic, continuous blasts of magma, uh, quite infrequent. Long lasting eruption, lightning due to a build up of static electricity. Very viscous, rheolitic lava, pyroclastic material, pumice, and ash comprised of. Height of eruption column is less than 55 kilometers. Intrusive igneous landforms, batholith, large masses of intrusive igneous rock that may cause a general doming of the surface as they are forming. All in, uh, intrusive igneous landforms are formed by magma rising slowly to the surface but cooling and solidifying before being released. Only exposed after gradual weathering or erosion of less resistant overlying rock comprised of resistant rocks such as granite and gabbro. Example is Dartmoor in Cornwall which forms part of a large batholith that extends under Cornwall and beyond. Bosses and sills. The boss, a small scale version of a batholith. Example is at Shap in Cumbria. Sills, intrusions that are formed parallel to bedding planes in the overlying rock often lying horizontally as you can see here in this diagram. When overlying rock is weathered and eroded, a sill may be exposed producing steep coastal cliffs or rock outcrops. The bedding planes provide weaknesses along which the magma will flow before cooling and solidifying. The magma contracts as it cools, forming cracks in resultant rock. Dikes Dikes are formed in the same way as sills, except they cut across the bedding planes of overlying rock, often vertically. Example of sill is the Great White Sill in the Isle of Arran. Example of a dike is Drummadune in the Isle of Arran, of which commonly these two are commonly made of a material called dolerite. Economic benefits of igneous activity. Building materials such as granite because it's very hard and resistant. Minerals, you can get crystal, crystallized uh, substances in the ground. Geothermal energy, such as hydroelectric power in uh, Iceland. And tourism, such as in the Lake District where you get tertiary employment. Extrusive activity. This is where magma and hot rocks close to the surface interact with groundwater example at Yellowstone National Park. Geysers. 
Water heated at depth in the crust by magma chambers can periodically escape as steam and hot water. A geyser is an intermittent, turbulent discharge of superheated water. Boiling mud. This is where hot water mixed with mud on the surface. Sulfuras, where the escape of steam and water are mixed with sulfur rich gases, with which smells and stains are yellow due to this sulfur, as you can see in the picture. Fumaroles. Areas where superheated water turns to steam as it evaporates on the surface. Finally, hot springs, areas of superheated water on the surface. These are my eruption case studies. First of all, Mount St. Helens in May 1980. So the, uh, an earthquake uh, happened on 18th of May 1980 at around 8.30 a.m. The Juan de Fuca subduction under the North American plate is what triggered this. Composite volcano in Washington, D.C. in the America. Landslide triggered by magnitude 5 earthquake destabilized the north flank of the volcano and this caused a lateral eruption. Pyroclastic flows lahars and floods were common. 540 meters million tons of ash over an area of 57,000 kilometers squared. Every plant and animal within 25 kilometers north of the volcano was killed destroyed 250 homes and 185 miles of highway and 12 million salmon died. 57 people died in total. Ash damaged up car uh, engines and farm machinery and crops costing farmers a total of 100 million pounds. 15 centimeters of ash fell causing traffic chaos and cancelled flights. Tourists no longer visited the area, causing a reduction in the local economy, however it did pick up eventually. There were warnings that a major eruption would happen, including minor earthquakes increasing in size and frequency a year prior to the eruption, as well as a bulge indicating magma was rising up. Danger zones were set up, however. The lateral blast was not predicted, so the exclusion zones were wrong. Short-term aid included medical supplies, shelter for homeless, rescued nearly 200 people. Long-term aid, millions of tons of ash removed from the area, millions of trees were planted costing 30, 30, 300 million US dollars. Compensation given to farmers costing 70 million US dollars. And new tourist facilities built to bo boost tourism as well as money given to rebuild houses after 200 homes were destroyed and a new highways built and major repairs were made. Montserrat in the Caribbean. Information. Part of the part of an island arc formed from two oceanic plates meeting together, so the Caribbean, which is denser, and the North American plate. A small island about 100 kilometers squared in size, and the volcano is the Sufria Hills volcano. Until 1995, economy was based on farming, fishing, and tourism, and it was a relatively poor LGC country with an average household income of £2,800 per year. Primary effects of the eruption There were pyroclastic flows and floods as valleys were blocked by ash. Vegetation and farmland was destroyed. 20 villages and two-thirds of homes were destroyed by pyroclastic flows. Health problems from harmful gases and ash, silicosis. Tourism also came to a halt. Secondary effect. Forest fires caused by pyroclastic flows. 23 people died as a result of pyroclastic flows burning them alive. More than half of Montserrat became uninhabitable. And an aging population as many young people left the island. Around 4,000 people went to the UK. 7,000 or two thirds of the people have left the island behind destroyed the capital city, Plymouth, and a economy was devastated. <laughs> Short-term responses. Banded capital city of Plymouth, as I've just said. Uh, by November 1997, population fallen from 
1,200 people to 3,500. Long-term responses. Volcanic observatory built in 1996 to monitor the volcano. British government gave £200 million for compensation and redevelopment. The presence of volcano meant there was growth in tourism. Eifiaki Loco in Iceland. Mid-Atlantic Rift, it was at constructive plate margin where the plates are moving apart. The shield volcano was surrounded by ice and water. Underwater ice cap means eruption similar to composite volcano as hydrogen in water mixes with the lava making it thitter, thicker and acidic. The main effect, this is mainly on air travel. Uh, less demand for air fuel because there's loss of money for the oil industry. Stock market share in air travel and tourism agencies dropped 40%. Airspace closed across much of Europe with 7,000 or more flights can a day cancelled. Increased use of the Eurostar train services, ships and ferries. Flash floods, damaged fields and homes in Iceland. But it did increase the tourism. Increased spending by people who were stranded in the UK by hotels and food for example. Responses launched a massive Europe-wide review of safety of planes going through ash clouds, and rules have now changed so flying can continue now if there is an eruption. Near Congo in Democratic Republic of Congo. It was the Shield Volcano, part of the East African Rift Valley. A fissure opened up and poured lava out. The plates were moving apart. The lava reached speeds of 60 kilometers an hour. There was little warning as lava reached the city of Goma. Fourteen nearby villages were destroyed in the lava flow. Cholera spread because of lack of sanitation in areas that people fled to. The lava took a long time to cool and it burnt people as they tried to return to their homes. Destroyed Goma airport and lava covered many roads making it also difficult to travel. One month after the eruption, 350,000 people were dependent on aid. Lava covered 15% of the city of Goma and destroyed 30% of the city. Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Composite volcano at a destructive plate margin. It was correctly predicted eruption within 24 hours. Very big eruption with violent pyroclastic flows. Communities as far as 50 miles from volcano was showered in ash and sand. Ash created a global cooling effect, being scattered and went into the jet stream. Ash went up 100,000 100, feet in the air. Mount Antake in Japan. Went without any warning, they had absolutely no idea. Japan is supposed to be a leading in earthquake science. Uh, it erupted without warning, spewing ash and rocks, killing amateur climbers in its path. Huge pyroclastic flows which trapped 250 people on its slopes. At least 40 were injured and 54 people died. The visibility was completely reduced and reports highlighted how many people were engulfed into total darkness for several minutes. Recovery e efforts were however hampered in the early stages of the rescue due to volcanic conditions. The effort was halted as the volcano continued to shoot toxic gases rocks and ash into the air. Residents over a large area were warned of the risk of falling stones. Right, thank you for watching this and I'll catch you in part three of Tectonic Series.